Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working our way through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATselfprep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Andrew George, a 99th percentile MCAT tutor, and I will be walking through today's practice problem as if you were one of my private tutoring students. Be sure to hit pause and try this practice problem for yourself before watching my explanation. All right, let's walk through each of these answer choices one at a time and discuss which part of the brain is responsible for that function. Starting with answer choice A, coordinate thought and actions, that is definitely the cerebrum. The cerebrum is responsible for higher level um, cognitive functions such as thinking, decision making, planning, anything that you'd think of that humans can do that animals aren't very good at likely is associated with the cerebrum. And make sure that you don't confuse cerebrum with cerebellum. They are very different. And also know that the cerebrum is a synonym for cerebral cortex. Answer choice B, coordinate movement. This is actually the cerebellum. So good thing we didn't confuse answer choice A with this one. So cerebellum, the answer choice B. Cerebellum is what gives you balance. It makes it so your movements aren't jerky and makes it so they're smooth. And if you were to drink a bunch of alcohol, your cerebellum wouldn't work as well and you'd likely feel dizzy and might fall over. Answer choice C, coordinate sensory information. Whenever you see anything that has to do with sensory information being coordinated or being combined or being filtered or anything like that, I want you to immediately think of the thalamus. The thalamus is the sensory control tower of the brain. It coordinates all that sensory information. Finally, answer choice D, coordinate emotions. When you think about emotions, you should think about the limbic system. And more specifically, we're likely dealing with the amygdala. The amygdala is the primary center of the brain that deals with emotion. Keeping the different parts of the brain straight can be extremely difficult for students studying for the MCAT. I know that while I was studying for the MCAT, I found it to be very confusing because there are so many different parts of the brain and a lot of them sound similar. For instance, cerebrum, cerebellum, cerebral cortex, all those words are so similar, yet they have extremely different functions. And also, they have very confusing names, like amygdala has nothing to do with emotions, right? It's just this random word that someone came up with. And so keeping these brain areas can be straight can be really difficult, which is why I decided to cover this concept in my 10 Most Commonly Missed Concepts course. So if you're really kind of struggling to keep all these brain areas straight, I'd recommend checking that out. I walk through all the most important brain areas and give you simple mnemonics to remember every single one. I'd highly recommend checking it out. If you liked today's MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. And for more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATselfprep.com. And if you are really looking to maximize your MCAT score, feel free to visit my tutoring profile page and request a free 10-minute phone consultation. I'd love to chat with you, get to know your situation better, and help you know how you can maximize your MCAT score. I look forward to hearing from you soon. We'll see you next time.